Hey day guys. Just uh, wanted to show my little next project I'm doing here. And it's basically making a scabbard so I can carry my Rosy ranch hand uh, in another way. I can basically uh, make a sash or uh, maybe I should say a sling for it so I can carry it off my side or I could put a belt holster on it or uh, hang it off something like a saddle or a mountain bike or dirt bike etc. The options basically endless with this. So uh, what I've got are four pieces of canvas so far and I'm just going to show what I've done and we'll get into it. Uh, first materials of course. What I've used is shoe goo because I like it. It's waterproof and it stiffens up the material a little bit so it makes it kind of like instead of flimsy canvas it almost makes it kind of like a leather in my opinion. So that's why I've got the shoe goo. You've got a marker basically mark out your your lines and I'm not the best of sewing or um, crafting with with material and whatnot and making clothes but I've made holsters and stuff so I've got um, that done before so um, I'll show you in a minute one of the holsters I made but got sewing thread got myself a set of needles I've got one already going and scissors. Mostly what you're going to need and um, anything else you want. Uh, you're going to need the gun that you're going to make a scabbard for which in this case is my Rosie and this you can design in different ways. Um, this one's going to be a full scabbard that hides the gun and protects it completely so you're not scratching it. So it's going to be a fully um, a full scabbard almost like a gun bag it's going to be open in the bottom here to start with, but I may add a zipper on it later on. But just for now, it's just going to be open, open face. You can always fold them out so they, you know, you can have, you know, your, your gun sticking, stuff like that. I'll show that in a minute and as we get through the video. But, so you basically do a rough outline. You don't want to go right against the gun. You have to have some slack so you've got some room to play with. What I did was I took my first piece, I folded it, just so it saved me some stitching and some attaching. And I basically shoe gooed it, and, um, well, so I folded it, put the gun down, laid it out, shoe gooed it, and then I made a second copy of it with the two pieces that I cut off and folded them. Sorry, I couldn't fold them, I just shoe gooed them and attached them together. So they're, they're together. And what I'm working on right now is stitching this top section because when this goes together, um, it's actually going to be more like this. Um, this is going to be attached here. This will be zipped shut. This, or it's not zipped, but you know, stitched all the way. This will be stitched all the way. And this will be left open. But you don't want these frays where your gun's going to get caught trying to put it in there. You want it closed and closed so it's just one opening that you basically put your gun into. So um, that's what I'm working on right now. So I'm making my basically the lips of my uh, my uh, scabber and whoops I just keep slipping this needle. So yeah you'll have to excuse I got a broken finger right now. That's what happens when you don't pay your bailiff so don't do the wise. <laughs> just joking. But um, there we go. So I'm not the best stitching, but I'm just going to do it anyway, and I'm just using the old whip stitch, just stitching around, and you want to make sure you don't get caught up around the corner, or it just makes a mess. And we're just trying to close this. So instead of going in one side, you know, like normally stitching, where you end up with two frays, I'm doing a whip stitch that sort of closes it up and pulls everything tight, and trying to keep it pretty tight. Um, you don't want to go down too far, otherwise you'll get too much crinkling and wrinkling going on. Um, that last one I did was a little, little bit low, but we're going to make it work. So I'm going to continue on with this. There's no point videotaping just me sewing um, when we get, and I'll, I'll explain piece by piece as we go with this. So uh, there you go, this is just the, the, the beginning. Um, one other thing I'm going to do is put the inside lining with a softer cloth, probably 
it might be felt. It actually most likely will be felt. If not, I'm going to use sort of a, um, maybe a cotton. I don't want to use wool because um, it catches on the sight on the front of my, my gun. I was going to use this material, but it catches in, on that material. So I don't really want to do that. And then as you can see when I pull it out, it's got all this fuzz. So I've decided the wool's not a good idea. So I'm going to shoe goo in on the inside of this before I actually stitch the leaves shut into, um, with a, um, a material. And there's one way you can do it is that you stitch your material or you glue your material on the outside of your bag when you've stitched it. And then you can turn it inside out. And then it ends up being on the inside and you have a nice clean stitch without your your creases and frays on the end. Like the mistake I made on the first... Uh, uh, it's not really a scabber. It was more of a, um, um, a, a holster. But same principle. So anyways, that's that. Um... And as you can see, this fully closes, and the gun will sit inside. And in fact, the gun will be this way on it. That's how I traced it. So it'll sit inside here, just like a bag, and this will slide out as the gun. So there you go. Um, I'll quickly show you the holster that I've done um, already, just so you, so you get an idea of what this project's going to be like. All right, so I just wanted to mention... I've got this also this long skirt to go on and of course when this gun's inside the scabber with the long skirt that's when it's going to hang out a little bit so it'll be you know easier to grab if it's on a horse or whatnot it's just another option um, I could have made it longer so this fits in but I just decide not to because you can always um, have a strap on the front end where you can fold the front end up a little bit with my design and um that way you can make it adjustable for um, long skirt, short skirt type scenarios. But anyways, that's just the Rossi Ranch hand. Um, I'll show you the previous uh, holster I did is this one. Now, I've done this for, for a couple different, um, in this case, these pistols I have. These are two air guns. This is a Daisy. This is a Crossman. And um, yeah, I'll just quickly say this one's pretty cool. It's a side pump. It doesn't work until you've actually cocked it first, and then you can pump it. Sort of an interesting design. And this one's just a regular pneumatic. But anyway, we're not talking about air guns. We're just talking about... Or real guns. <laughs> so this is the holster I designed. It's just a one design. Um, that one's not going to be quite like this, and doesn't need to have the scorpion or whatnot on it. I just wanted to design these up. This is a side ammo pouch or um, CO2 slash pellets, whatever you want to put in it. Basically like a little wallet with the um, belt loops on it. So it goes with that with a throwing knife and a air gun just for fun. And But the, the, the principle is what I wanted to show is sort of the double lined um, part here. And it's uh, just the scabber, but this is an added piece which is another piece of cloth that I've turned into the belt loops of different ways so you put belts stuff like that through it to strap it to whatever you want in many different um, fashions so it's uh, it works pretty well so um, anyways it's got the as you can see just cotton inside as protective and that's what we're going to aim for with um, with that one over there uh, this has a knife on it. This scabber is not going to have any fancy attachments to it. It's just going to be the plain old canvas um, uh, shotgun scabber. Uh, I may put a, a pouch on it, like a something similar to this on the front. Maybe a couple of them, you know, just to put ammo and a cleaning kit on it. But that's probably as far as I'll go with it. Along with some uh, loops to attach a, um, a, a sling to so I can carry the the Rossi Ranch hand on my back in the scabber. I could have, um, or it could just carry off to the side on my left side, and then I have my rifle on the right side or shotgun on the right side. Just different options. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. The scabber is what I'm working on. That's the actual project, not how I'm going to necessarily carry my gun. So, anyways, um, yeah, that's the beginning of this project. I uh, just thought I'd show how this is made because um, 
it's really easy to do. It's just time consuming to some degree. So, uh, yeah, I made the one and it worked well. And it's going to last quite a while. So I've decided I'm going to do a scabber for that little rosy before I scratch it up and uh, mark it for good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll show the next stage when, when I get to it. All right, there's two things I forgot to mention, and that's the shoe goo. When you put the shoe goo in to put your two pieces together, uh, you don't want to go right up against the edges, even though it makes this more crisp, and it works. Um, I don't like doing that because it makes a lot of more work for putting your stitching. When you do your stitching, you basically have to use a dime or, I guess, a thimble. I don't know. I've never used um, thimbles before. But anyway, you need to get a hard surface to push that needle through because your finger's not going to do it when you're trying to go through shoe goo. So I go a few inches away from the surface, and that way when you do your stitching, it's a lot easier to do your sewing and whatnot. And you can always reinforce it with um, another kind of material if you ever want to. Um, for instance, silicone is one option. You can always use uh, that waterproofens it. You could always dip it in some form of uh, plastic, like ABS glue, or these are just ideas. You don't have to, just leave the plain canvas if you want. I'm going to start off with just leaving the plain canvas, but I may end up putting a coating on it if I want to make it waterproof. But anyways, um, that's basically that. I've got this one corner tacked so far. I'm going to continue stitching this, and then I'm going to tack my corners and then start stitching the whole thing together. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is for these frays, you don't want to pull them out because you're just going to keep chasing them. If you cut them, I find they just keep pulling out too. What I like to do is just burn them with a lighter. Just do this and then stuff it out just at the edges at the end. And um, it, it's, it's a good way to get rid of your frays. I still need to cut that little bit of edge off anyway before I start stitching. So... Um, yeah, those are just some little tips that will make your job go a little easier. Um, you want to spread the shugu as evenly as you can so you end up with sort of an evenly stiff um, surface. You can always insert cardboard on the insides of these two leaves if you even want more rigidness. Um, I don't mind if mine's a little bit floppy. I just need a, uh, a holster. I can always beef it up later too. Um, I'll show some options of that in this video as well. So, uh, there you go. Okay, so, we've got this one corner here tacked. It's the only corner so far, and we've got these stitched closed. So when I slide my rifle in, we're not catching any edge. So, you can still see it, still uh, two pieces, each piece, and that doesn't really matter because we're going to stitch along there, along there, and along there when basically we can. So um, I'm going to start off with stitching this corner up next and trying to keep this even. And then I'll stitch that those two far end corners. And then I'll just do periodic tacks along the sides and one at the bottom there. And then when I've done that, I'll end up stitching the whole thing. And I'm trying to decide whether I actually end up using a sewing machine or not. I don't really want to. I kind of like the idea of hand stitching it, though it's a lot more work. Now, uh, with hand stitching, it doesn't look as nice as in professionally done, but that way you can tell it's homemade, and I kind of like that look. And also, um, I think hand stitching, you just get a better stitch. It's stronger. Um, in, at least when I stitch, it, it seems to be stronger than what a sewing machine does. So anyways, um, well with the sewing machine you could go over it a few times, um, but I just find hand stitching is a little more satisfying um, in basically the long run. It's just a lot more work. So uh, here we go. I'm just going to basically tack this. So I'll run some thread. I'm not going to need a lot because these are just tacks now. Now I'm using a big head because I'm not very good at sewing and not very good at threading the needles, so I'm using a large needle. Uh, of course, with a smaller needle, it probably works a bit better, but this is working just fine for me. So 
So I'm just doing the simple knot where I just tie that kind of into a tangle around my finger and pull it tight. And that usually works just fine. So I'm going on the outside because we're going to turn this inside out in the long run. So I want my thread bundle to be on the inside. Another thing you can do, which I actually like to do, is you go inside the corner for your first one. Whoops, so it's hidden. As you can see, my uh, knot's still not big enough to hold the needle. That's the problem with the big needle, as to using a smaller, finer needle. Let's try that again. Just see if I can just pull out an, a larger knot there. So, go through there. See, it didn't hold very good. I'm going to try going through the two pieces. I guess um, I don't have much choice. It's just not holding my knot very well. So there we go. I'm going to go through this now. So that's going through the four pieces. And now we're just doing our whip stitch. And of course we're going to go more over this. So it's going to be really strong and secure. We just want our corners really tight of course and really well stitched for durability and keeping this thing from basically coming apart. So there we go. And I'll go one more. Now what I like to do just for the end is we go through our little loop here and then either cut it or just pull the needle through and then we just tie our two uh, thumb knots just on the end of this thread here. Not sure if you guys can see what I'm doing but so I'm explaining it too. So we'll try and tie these two threads so they don't pull through. And I like to run it through itself on the needle or on the thread because it makes a tighter hole that it doesn't want to pull through on and um, you're not going to end up with it disappearing. And I just take those threads away with just a lighter. So there you go. I got two and that's our opening right there for our gun. Um, of course, I need to stitch all these sides and those, but I'm going to start with those corners down here first. I'm going to square that up. Um, as you can see, I've got just a little bit more to cut off there, and then we're going to stitch that. But I'm going to save this side last because, as you can see, this is going to fit in here, and I've got a lot of slack room. I'm thinking about cinching it up a little bit tighter around my uh, my rifle so it actually has the shape of it. It'll probably be a little more cut along into that kind of a line and maybe even... Well, I'll probably keep that there actually the, for now. I can always change it out later. But um, yeah, I think to cut it up into a, a tighter, tighter line would be kind of nice. That way the gun's not flopping around in the scabbard. It sort of sits in snug, kind of like my my BB guns do. That holster for my BB guns is a tad long. Um, this one's going to fit a little snugger. So, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to cut out that that edge and um, sort of make it more gun profile. But um, what I'll do is I'll start off with that corner, stitch that, and then I'm going to cut out my profile to follow my, my gun shape. And then I'll end up tacking that up. And then the gun will fit in there nice. Um, I want it sort of fitting snug so this almost cradles it. So that's why I want the, the shape here. So instead of it sagging down and the muzzle hitting the bottom of the bag, this guard will catch onto this section before it actually hits the bottom of the bag. And, sort of protects the gun a little bit better. That's at least the idea of of my idea. <laughs> okay, so we've got this one corner here tacked. It's the only corner so far, and we've got these stitched closed. So when I slide my rifle in, we're not catching 
any edge. So you can still see it, still uh, two pieces, each piece, and that doesn't really matter because we're going to stitch along there, along there, and along there when basically we can. So um, I'm going to start off with stitching this corner up next and trying to keep this even. And then I'll stitch that those two far end corners. And then I'll just do periodic tacks along the sides and one at the bottom there. And then when I've done that, I'll end up stitching the whole thing. And I'm trying to decide whether I actually end up using a sewing machine or not. I don't really want to. I kind of like the idea of hand stitching it, though it's a lot more work. Now uh, with hand stitching, it doesn't look as nice as in professionally done, but that way you can tell it's homemade, and I kind of like that look. And also, um, I think hand stitching, you just get a better stitch. It's stronger. Um, in, at least when I stitch it, it seems to be stronger than what a sewing machine does. So anyways, um, well with a sewing machine you could go over it a few times, um, but I just find hand stitching is a little more satisfying. Um, in basically the long run. It's just a lot more work. So uh, here we go. I'm just going to basically tack this. So I'll run some thread. I'm not going to need a lot because these are just tacks now. now. I'm using a big head because I'm not very good at sewing and not very good at threading the needles so I'm using a large needle. Uh, of course with a smaller needle it probably works a bit better but this is working just fine for me. So I'm just doing the simple knot where I just tie that kind of into a tangle around my finger and pull it tight. And that usually works just fine. So I'm going on the outside because we're going to turn this inside out in the long run. So I want my thread bundle to be on the inside. Another thing you can do, which I actually like to do, is you go inside the corner for your first one. Whoops, so it's hidden. As you can see, my uh, knot's still not big enough to hold the needle. That's the problem with the big needle, as to using a smaller, finer needle. Let's try that again just see if I can just pull out an, a larger knot there. So, go through there. See, it didn't hold very good. I'm going to try going through the two pieces. I guess um, I don't have much choice. It's just not holding my knot very well. So there we go. I'll go through this now. So that's going through the four pieces. And now we're just doing our whip stitch. And of course we're going to go more over this, so it's going to be really strong and secure. We just want our corners really tight, of course, and really well stitched for durability and keeping this thing from basically coming apart. do just for the end is we go through our little loop here and then either cut it or just pull the needle through and then we just tie our two uh, thumb knots just on the end of this thread here. Not sure if you guys can see what I'm doing but so I'm explaining it too. So we'll try and tie these two threads so they don't pull through. And I like to run it through itself on the needle or on the thread because it makes a tighter hole that it doesn't want to pull through on and um, you're not going to end up with it disappearing. And I just take those threads away with just a lighter. So there you go. I got two and that's our opening right there for our gun. Um, of course, I need to stitch all these sides and those, but I'm going to start with those corners down here first. I'm going to square that up. Um, 
as you can see, I've got just a little bit more to cut off there, and then we're going to stitch that. But I'm going to save this side last because, as you can see, this is going to fit in here, and i got a lot of slack room. I'm thinking about cinching it up a little bit tighter around my uh, my rifle, so it actually has the shape of it. It'll probably be a little more cut along into that kind of a line, and maybe even... Well, I'll probably keep that there, actually, the, for now. I can always change it out later, but um, yeah, I think to cut it up into a, a tighter, tighter line would be kind of nice. That way the gun's not flopping around in the scabbard. It sort of sits in snug, kind of like my, my BB guns do. That holster for my BB guns is a tad long. Um, this one's going to fit a little snugger. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely going to cut out that, that edge and um, sort of make it more gun profile. But um, what I'll do is I'll start off with that corner, stitch that, and then I'm going to cut out my profile to follow my, my gun shape. And then I'll end up tacking that up. And then the gun will fit in there nice. Um, I want it sort of fitting snug so this almost cradles it. So that's why I want the, the shape up here. So instead of it sagging down and the muzzle hitting the bottom of the bag, this guard will catch onto this section before it actually hits the bottom of the bag. And sort of protects the gun a little bit better. That's at least the idea of, of my idea. <laughs> okay, so... I've got this now, corner to corner, to this far corner here, along with right here, tacked. So it, two sleeves open so far. So what we can do is we slip our gun in, and it's inside, and we got enough room to stitch that there, and that's all going to be stitched. But we have this much room. So what we're going to do is we're going to trace this sort of out um, with our Sharpie to where we want to cut to fit the, um, the this lever. So um, because we've got enough room there, I'm going to we want it to be a snug fit. So what I'm going to do is I can feel that there is I'm going to actually make a stitch that's going to follow that line on a separate section after I've cut out my rough shape. So the rough shape is basically going to be um, right along here. Like so. So we're going to cut that out that um, that line that I just marked and when we cut that out uh, I can start tacking it and um, when that gets all tacked and then we stitch the bottom up uh, I'm going to basically put in my stitch right in here that's going to be a catch to catch my lever so the gun won't slide any further towards the um, the, the bottom of my scabber so it's kind of floating in there so, um, really simple. It just takes some thinking to do before you, you actually do it. So, uh, there you go. Um, I'm just going to turn off the camera to save some time. I'm going to go ahead and cut my, my thing out, and then I'll show you what we got. Alright, so here we are still working on our scabber. It's time-consuming, but I knew what I was in for before I started. So I've got um, my stitching all done along the end here. So that's now sealed shut. Um, you can see, I've still got a lot of tacking still to do and stitching. I'm stitching right along here right now. Uh, I'm going to go as much thread as I can. I like doing this in pieces, um, as in small pieces of thread for two reasons. One, less likely of getting tangled when you're going through. And also, if you ever got a thread fray, and it came out, it only comes out in a section, and you don't have to redo all of it, you just redo the sections that you you need to do. So it's just um, user-friendly, and in my sense more practical, at least for me, especially when you're not as skilled um, with uh, needle and thread as myself. 
uh, I don't do a lot of sewing at all. Uh, the only sewing I really did was in cadets and a tiny, tiny little bit here and there when I need to stitch up my ripped up clothing. But generally speaking, I don't do a lot of sewing. I'm not a seamstress or whatever you... I don't even know if there's a male term for seamstress because that sounds very feminish to me. But anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, we're just making this scabber because... Why? Because we want one. So, that's all. Um, if you got the time to do it, I mean, you can always buy one. The scabbers aren't that expensive, but if you want a custom fit, it's pretty easy just to make one, I think. Um, I could go and modify one that I go buy, but... That's just a lot of work in my sense, and it looks really stupid when you have something that's well made, and then you've gone into it, and then, especially with my skill of stitching, it looks better off, in my opinion, if I just make one from scratch. <laughs> that way the whole thing is sort of uniform, and it all looks the same as to looks like some guy who doesn't know what he's doing tried to fix something and really didn't know what he was doing, as to a guy who doesn't know how to sew but knew what he was doing. That's kind of where I'm going with this. Anyway. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, I've got basically a lot of the, um... The, the rough work done. So now we're working on to actually attaching it and making it usable. I'm not going to do my lining uh, with the felt or whatever because A, lack of material. And also, I just want to make something that I can put my gun in for now. I can always add on to it later. Um... That's the nice thing about making your own as well. So, um, yeah, I'm just basically just continuing on with a whip stitch around this edge here until we've run out of thread, and then I will tie it off and then continue by doing more tacks down there and then stitching sections together. At least enough that I can put the gun in put my brace stitch in that's going to hold the gun in place and then do my final stitching and some touch-ups. So um, I'll continue on. And I just wanted to mention, uh, don't worry about these drawn lines when we mark it out and whatnot if you make mistakes. Um, this thing's going to get turned inside out, so this is actually the inside of the uh, scabber anyway. And um, the other thing about the inside is uh, you can always turn it back inside out um, and then put your liner in there, and then turn it back inside out again. So, there's always that. That's how you get your, your liner on it, um, after the fact. So, that's just an option. Thought I'd let you guys know, just in case you guys are wondering. Um, I don't plan on leaving that exposed and whatnot. So, we're not doing all this work, and then gonna have something looks like a piece of shit in the end. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, I just wanted to mention that. Okay, so I've stitched from here all the way down to this corner, right to here, stitched all the way across there, and that's full stitch now, so it's uh, completely closed. So when we put the gun in, which I will do, it's going to hold which it does. So now I just have to stitch along here to finish these up where I've tacked and stitch all the way up there and we basically have a bag. Um, I haven't stitched this section up here yet because of two reasons. One, I'm uh, not 100% sure. I'm thinking about cutting that this flap, as you can see, off square so it's um, just a little bit more compact. I might not. I might um, leave it. I'm trying to decide because I was thinking if I do leave it, what I would do is stitch out a section there and cut a hole in there and sort of make like a hand loop grab. Uh, but I, I don't know. I, I want this to slide out still with that big lever. So you see there is still room. Uh, I could still do that. So it'd have to be sort of but then this could be a, a a hand grab, sort of, just as an extra option. Just sort of an idea. So, um, I'm going to think about that a bit more. I might not go with that idea. Just sort of an idea. And um, 
where I cut this curve that I was talking about, where you saw me trace it, um, there was shoe goo because I didn't think about um, doing that curve before. It was going to be a straight bag, and now it's going to be fitting this gun a little bit better, so it's just a tighter profile. Um, I had to push through the, the shoe goo with my needle, which was quite hard on the fingers. So, in this case, I just used a shotgun shell. Worked good. You could use a penny, a uh, beer cap, like a bottle cap. Works fine. Uh, if you don't have a, a thimble or whatnot. Just, um, just a little handy little tip there. So, I'm going to continue on. Of course, I've got to stitch up here, stitch up here. I'll do all that next. Get this whole straight line stitched. So, at least the gun's in the bag. And um, I'm probably going to clean this, this edge up just a little bit more before I uh, go ahead and stitch that. But I'm thinking I'll just keep it an open bag because what I can always do now, I'm just thinking this now. And what I thought what I could do is when I turn it inside out, stitch another section in here. So I've got a pocket that I can stick some ammo or um, maybe I'll stick a cleaning kit in there instead actually. So um, I think a cleaning kit sort of with a little zipper pouch might be a kind of cool idea and then I can always put a pocket on the outside of, of this for, for an ammo pocket um, just as an idea um, we'll see I'm sort of improvising as I go to I just have a rough idea in my head as I went and we're um, sort of going with the flow I guess to make up this this bag so um, you can keep it so you have this kind of rustic look, at, look, which is I kind of do like. Or if you turn them inside out, then you get a real nice crease. And um, because I plan to take this to the gun club and stuff like that, and I'm not just using it for home use, I'm going to actually turn it inside out, make it look more professional. Um, as to my homemade other one that you saw that's just sort of home use. I don't think I'd go ahead and draw on it. I'd probably do more embroidering or have someone do some beadwork on it if I was going to go fancy and do a design. But um, I don't want to do any beadworking on it personally, but I do actually know someone who's really good with beads, a First Nations artist who I might get to um, do some art on and, and end up paying her. But for, for now, I'm just going to... Well, I have to talk to her first and see if she's even willing to, but I'm sure she would. Um, if I know her as well as I think I do. So, um, anyways, I'm going to, uh, yeah, continue on with my little project here and probably show you guys once I got this guy stitched and what I've decided to do with that side over on that far side there. Alright, so we're almost done now. Got this whole edge all stitched almost get my hand in there and all the way up to about here so I just have to now stitch this one section and leave this side open that's why we stitched these two sections first and as you can see it will now be a scabbard all right so let's get some of this stuff out of the way and we'll put this in view so you can see it's now all stitched and the mare's leg can now fit inside our scabber. Now I'm going to stitch there at some point, but I'm almost out of um, thread, so I'm not going to do that right now. Now, okay, it works just fine as a scabber still, so I'm going to keep my gun in there, and we're good to go. Um, I'm not going to put my strap in up here just yet, uh, up here just yet, because I, or not a strap, you know what I mean, the, the stitch that I want to do. But for now, it can just sit in there. This is just as good as a scabber too. So we're about halfway done. And it's one form of scabber, but the one I want to do is just a little bit more elaborate. So we're, you can just do it this way if, if you sort of want the burlap sack look. Or if you want it to look more refined, then yeah, you've got to turn it inside out. But it's a little more detail with your stitching and whatnot. As you can see, I've uh, had a little bit difficulty um, getting all my pieces lined up perfectly where when I did my stitching, I actually hit on the second one all the time. So uh, I need a little bit more stitching to do to reinforce that, make it a bit more stronger. 
But for tonight, this is good enough. I mean, it's 10.30 now. That's another hour gone by, so... I've worked five hours and just got to this stage, so... It's good enough for now. Alright, so... We're back on to the scabber. This is day two of working on this. Um, I've spent five hours on it so far, as you know, uh, from the first part of this video. So... What I want to do with this is work on this end here. As you can see, there's a lot of material here. I was going to stitch along there and then leave this as an open little pocket that I could put a cleaning kit into or something, but I don't really like that idea. It's quite a tight space that I'm left with and it's in a triangle. I don't really like it. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually just cut it right off straight along here and that'll get rid of this black line anyway and it will make it more straight and a tighter fitting bag so I don't have this huge opening that I'm not a big fan of and when it's a little smaller it'll be a little bit less material of um, velcro that I'm going to need and the opening of this other velcro bag I happen to have is very close to this size that I intend to cut out the velcro of the useless bag I never use and use that velcro to make this bag seal shut so that's what I've decided to do so I'm going to go ahead and cut this off and um, stitch it up and then we'll be putting the Velcro in. And I think we'll call this bag very close to done. I'm not going to turn it inside out like I originally was going to. Um, the reason I'm not going to do that is it's very hard to turn inside out. Uh, the style I made the bag, it's a little too tight and the gun will be very tight fitting in there and it'll be hard to get the gun out. I want the gun to slide out with ease, not get caught on um, on the site in the tight bag and things like that. So just uh, for, for easy sake, I'm just going to keep the bag um, uh, out. So my, my plan has changed a little bit. And that's just what happens when quite often when I try and do something or make something that I've designed in my head, quite often the plans change as I go. Um, I, I come up with either a better idea or something works a bit better. Quite often, what works in my head doesn't always work in real life. Uh, it's just one of the little things that <laughs> I've been dealing with my whole life. So I've gotten a lot better at making things work nowadays. I mean, I used to invent all sorts of stuff, and my inventions would never work. <laughs> I've gotten better where actually now about, I'd say about 90% of the time now, my so-called inventions um, work out pretty pretty good. So, um, anyways, and I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to get to work. So, I'm just cutting a straight line across here and uh, get sewing. Okay, for ease, I have drawn a dotted line. My gun's in here. I can feel the rib of the, uh, the lever, and I've given myself a finger space. So, I can pull this out now and go ahead and cut. And I'm running out of juice, so I'm going to go ahead and turn. Okay. So, just trying to angle it so you guys can see what I've done. Just cut that away. Um, I don't know, maybe there's something that I could be used for later. Um, reinforcement for something, I don't know. Just a uh, just spare piece, but I'm not going to throw it away just yet. It's um, quite a bit of material. So anyway, this is what I want. And I've stitched that. I'm going to go ahead and stitch this now. I haven't done it yet. So it's just wide open. And that's just going to get stitched shut. And so I'm left now with just a smaller pillowcase opening here. So I'll go ahead and stitch, start stitching. Probably take me about half an hour to do. And um, then we're going to be putting in our Velcro. Okay. So I'm halfway done. The flap. So I've got it stitched all the way here. Re reinforce this corner. And now when I stitch, I'm going to start at this corner, really beef that up and work my way here, and then finish my knot tying there. And that way, both corners are fully stressed. You don't have your knots tied on these corners. Um, I like to start sort of center, work my way to my reinforced section. Um, it probably doesn't matter. Uh, just, I'm thinking it it might. I'm trying it out. I When I make my holsters and stuff, I want them to hold out and last and when I do these scabber same thing is uh, I know where the stress is going to be so that's kind of where I concentrate on putting the real beefy um, 
connections um, as far as fastening it. And then I will um, maybe go a little little less in areas where it's not going to be so stressed, um, just to save a little bit of time and whatnot. So I'm going to continue on. I'm just going to stitch right to there, to there. And when that part's done, which won't take very long, um, I'm going to look at materials to make my uh, scabbers so I can close it. And um, we'll definitely dry fit the gun in there before we start messing around closing up the, the top and all that. So uh, I'm just going to, yeah, do another, uh, pretty much be using the rest of this thread I got here. And that'll be that. Um, I'm going to use as much of it as I can. If I run out, I run out, and we'll have to finish with what I've got or wait and get more. So I'm going to town tomorrow, so it's not the end of the world. I can just uh, uh, pick more. Th well, I'm going to be picking up thread regardless tomorrow because I'm almost out. When I go to town is when I stock up on supplies because I live on a little island that's hard to get this kind of stuff quite often. So I'm just going to continue on. i got to pull out my thread here. I go about four times the distance of that I'm traveling and I find to do your loops it's generally pretty close to, to enough to, to get by with what you're doing. Sometimes you need a bit more, sometimes you won't need it all. So that's all. It's just a good estimation tool. Um, at least that's what I find. You might have your own formula that works better. That's fine. Like I say, I'm, I'm not the, I'm not a, a tailor or a seamstress or whatever you want to call them. I just, I'm a hobbyist. I just, if I need something, sometimes I'll just make it. So, I think I mentioned this before. When you start out your thread, I like to hide the knot. So I go on the inside of there so it's tucked inside. And then we will start working on this corner. I used a shotgun shell. This is a dud shell by the way. It's already been fired. Um, I'm just using this back end as a hard surface. The primer has a bit of a dent in there from where it's been fired. Um, so I use that to hold my needle so it doesn't slip and I can just push it. Just a little trick I do. Um, if you have your own that's cool. If you've got a thimble that's probably best, but I don't have a thimble, probably will never buy one. So I'm, just, so I'm going over this corner quite a bit. I want to make sure it's a strong, strong uh, bend, because that's going to be one of the stress points. It's going to want to pull apart there. Sorry about the crappy lighting, but um, it's winter, and I only have so many lights. So I just do a whip stitch, like I said. And we're working our way to the center of where we left off. So I'll just continue on, so it'll probably be about 20 minutes or so, and um, then we'll be pretty much ready for the next stage. Alright, so you can see I've got it now all stitched. It's fully stitched. I'm just going to get rid of that thread there. Just clean it up a little bit. There. So, mare's leg fits perfectly in there. Now you can stitch in here to um, make a catch like I said, if you want. I'm not going to worry about that yet. That's something I'll do probably later on down the road um, when I've got my, my um, Velcro put into place and all that. Because you can see the gun fits in there perfectly. And a little bit of room, you can fold that over. So if I wanted, I could put two button snaps onto this and um, button it. Uh, put a button there and then button it through. Another thing is I could just put a button on the inside, a button on the inside, two snaps and snap it. Or line Velcro, male, female, on either side and then it will pull open. 
So those are options of how to keep it closed. The other thing is you can always strap leather and do the tie old, old school tassels. So you've got a few options of, of how you, you seal it. You don't even have to seal it. You can just leave it open like so if you wanted. It really doesn't matter. Um, the idea of mine was to be fully sealed and then I can fit it into this bag. And that's why I wanted the narrow profile. I didn't want that big big shovel head that I had. So it fits in this bag with some, some ease. And the gun fits in there really nice. It pulls out real, real easy and uh, keeps the gun protected so it's not banging around and getting scratched. Um, there's lots of modifications I can do to it. I could add straps, um, I could add a sling to it, I could put a handle on it, I could add pockets to it. I was thinking about adding a pocket big enough to slide in the long skirt so I have the long skirt option and it's all just on one bag. Just, just ideas. Um, what I sort of have going is a uh, 3G's and 4G's. It's grab gun go and grab gun gear go. It's just basically grab and go. And uh, this is an option of your, your grab gun go op uh, options that I have um, as one bag unit. You just grab the bag and go. So you, while well, you've got the firearm, and I want the firearm protected so it's not banging around in this bag getting scratched up. So that's why it I wanted a scabber for it. And also carrying around, I can carry it separately, take it to the gun club just in the scabber, throw this in the back of my truck, whatnot, and just take that. We're good to go. So or I can take the whole bag. It doesn't really matter. So just quickly show just for the hell of it what I've got going here. It's actually a hundred year old stock, believe it or not. This was made in uh it was eight, oh, fuck, it's older than that. I think it was um 1890 is when this this stock was made. It's got a real nice old school blued metal uh, finished butt head. I had to grind out the inside to fit the gun properly because it didn't go on there properly. But now it fits just fine. Uh, well, it fits really tight actually, which is better than fitting loose. So that's okay. What I've got also with this kit that I've put together is my cleaning gear. Just a uh, uh, 40 caliber bore brush and uh, bore swab. I've got um, got myself a put together push rod clean rod system. I have here a pair of earplugs. These are my custom. Oh no, these aren't my custom earplugs. These are just foam expansion ones. I do have custom earplugs. Um, I thought they were in here actually. They must be with my other other gear. And then I've got two boxes of ammo. So just a quick little, you know, grab gun go option. This just if you're wondering, it's 44 mag um, hollow points for my sweat my mare's leg shoots. And yeah, it's sort of a just a big mean bullet um, hollow point bear stopper or man stopper whatever you want to call it so there that's just my quick little kit um, also have the one point sling which I do like uh, you might not want to know why why would you have a sling if you have a scabber well when you're shooting these short mares legs without the long skirt accuracy is an issue so you push against that short sling when you're shooting and it really makes all the difference. I've got a video on how to get accuracy out of the mare's leg and um, you might want to watch that if, if you want to know how to how to operate the sling properly. So anyways that's the scabber of for my mare's leg that I made just I mean it's time consuming but it's simple. I mean, I've put about six hours into this, and I've got myself a, a pretty good bag for my, my gun now. And it double up probably for a couple other guns I have, um, just for the hell of it. Here, I'll show you. Instead of just the mare's leg, I've got this. Yeah, we'll just see what my coach guns do, just out of curiosity. I've got uh, this little twenty two here. So you see, it fits a little bit over the... Um, the bag, but it still would work to just carry it around and protect it. You know, 
So there's that. I mean, it sticks out a bit, but it, it works. Uh, whoops, sorry, just hit the tripod with the rifle. And then we got my uh, double barrel coach gun here. That might fit. Yeah, it kind of does. I mean, the skirt still sticks out, but it just protects it a bit, protects the barrel and whatnot. You can stick this down behind your seat of your truck, and you don't need to worry about scratching it. Just things like that. But we know that we custom built it for the mare's leg. So you want to build a scabber for your shotgun or any other gun? Trace the gun out and go ahead and make it. You can make a custom fit uh, for whatever you want. Um, just a quick little tip, because you might say, well, why don't you just go out and buy one? And you're right, you can. This is just a little setup I have. Don't mind all the stuff stuck on it. I've got lots of videos with this scabber. This is another shotgun scabber. It's kind of like a holster, actually. Um, and I could have used this, but I'll show you why I didn't. This mare's leg loop sticks out. That's as far as you can go in. And the gun's only yay long. I have about eight, nine inches of flop on the end that doesn't need to be there. So with the smaller one, you don't have that, that extra few inches of dead space, basically. So that's the nice thing about custom building your own. Um, Price-wise, hard to say. This is probably cheaper. I mean, you can buy a scabber. I paid $30 for that one. That's more expensive scabber. Generally speaking, they're about $20 for a gun case or a scabber. So, or a gun bag even. So, I mean, you can save a lot of money. The thing is, is you get a custom fit with a custom build. That's what I like about it. If you're into making your own shit, it can be fun. It's satisfying when you're done, when you've finished all that work and you know that you made yourself a pretty sweet product. That's what I like about it. And you can always add on to it. You can always add on to a a, a, um, a home uh, a store-bought one, but when you add on a store-bought ones, you'll know that you added on to it. As to just a homemade one, you'll know it was homemade from scratch. Um, I think the homemade stuff kind of looks better as to homemade on a store-bought thing. Homemade on a store-bought kind of looks tacky as to having something made from scratch kind of looks... In my opinion, I think it just looks better to have something made from scratch than something that was bought and then modified. Um, unless you can do a really, really good job of that modification where it matches the way it was made. I'm just being picky, maybe. Um, I just... I mean, whatever. If you want to go out and buy a scabber, go out and buy a scabber. Uh, but if you want to make one, that's what this video is for. So, uh, yeah, I think that's where I'll leave it. Uh, I've got myself my mare's leg bag, and pretty happy with it. It's exactly what I envisioned when I was going to make it, pretty much. Um, the It's not as stiff as I wanted it. It's a little flimsier. If I want it stiffer, I probably would line it with cardboard or put a couple more layers of canvas to it and shoe goo it, of course. Shoe goo the, between the layers, and that gives you more rigid, rigidity. But, I mean, I'd say this is kind of like... Well, it's thicker than canvas because it's double layered on each side, but it, it to me, it I want to say it has a leathery feel. I mean, I know it's not like leather at all. It really isn't, but as far as thickness and, like, that kind of nest, it is kind of leathery-like, um, and that's kind of like what I was going for. So there you go. Um, yeah, like, I'm, I think I showed this already. Um, but I've got, uh, you can make wallets um, or just bullet pouches or other kind of pouches. This is one with a button clasp I made and two belt loops. But it's all the same style. It's double layered canvas, uh, shoe glued together, and then folded over and stitched. And then I added these two little belt loops just out of the same principle. Um, it's just a lot of stitching, that's all. But it turns out to be a really nice I mean, this is better than the wallet I own that I bought at the store, just as far as manufacturer-wise goes. So, uh, they're pretty cool. Um, I like them, and 
you can make them any size, any way. So, just, I don't know, just hope that inspires some of you all to get creative. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that. That's my mare's leg scabbard. So if you like that video, stay tuned, because I got six foot roll here of Kevlar. Next, we're making a bulletproof vest.